Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, we're going to review the book Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, if you don't know who Robert Kiyosaki is, he's an author. This is his most famous book. And he was featured in Oprah in the early 90s. And that's when he started to become world famous. And he's written many, many books. But this is his most famous book that's his aspire, inspired uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, many, many people uh, to think differently. And the tagline is, is what the rich teach their kids about money that the poor and middle class do not. So what it is, is the book is just kind of like a series of parables that are supposed to teach, um, you know, how to think differently, how people in who are, um, who make a lot of money think differently compared to poor and middle class people. And there's a saying that basically um, a lot of wealth is determined not by how hard you work, but more of it comes from your mindset and, and there's a lot of good nuggets about that so just to kind of give you a little background about about myself i grew up in a nice upper middle class area in southern california and when i think about the things that were taught to me and in my peer group a lot of it even though i was in an upper middle class area and i know how to have some friends who were, who were rich we were taught this, what he describes as what the poor and middle class um, uh, learn, right? The ideas that, that that I'm going to kind of go over what the difference between rich and I'll say non-rich people talk about. Um, we definitely did not learn um, anything that let's say rich dad uh, would teach, right? And so just to kind of give you a, a quick background of the the book, basically uh, Robert is talking about his childhood. Um, uh, dads you know one is and let me just kind of go to my notes here so basically he has two dads i'll call rich dad mr miyagi you know he's not your real dad but he is like your dad right but and he lives next door but basically it was his um you know best friend's uh dad uh as a kid and he was a really rich dude was something about like being uh, owning lots of hotels in hawaii or something like that and he would teach robert certain concepts and then poor dad, who's who's almost like my real dad, uh, would teach kind of like something that was different. So he kind of like uh, gives a contrast between his friend's dad, who was really rich, versus his poor dad, who wasn't exactly poor, but made a lot of money, but was always living paycheck to paycheck. And that's kind of like a, even a common theme today, where many people, at least like 60% of people who make more than six figures are living paycheck to paycheck. So basically what it does is tell kind of a story about like, Hey, this is what rich dad told me versus what my real dad told me. And I'll be honest, like he, he calls his real dad, poor dad. Right. And I, I kind of um, resonate with a lot of the things that he says uh, because I feel like, you know, his dad is almost very similar to my dad. Right. And I think it might be like the old Asian stereotype, but he's like fourth generation Japanese American from Hawaii, whereas I'm like second generation Korean American, but there is kind of like some of the same traits and mentalities. And um, I resonate more with the rich dad ideas. And you know, what's really sad is that it's been a while. It's been almost, I think 30 years since this book has been released. So I thought like these ideas were like, um, you know, they were obvious to the people now, and maybe it's probably because I consume so much media regarding these types of ideas like entrepreneurship and real estate investing that I just thought everyone else knew them. And then, you know, when I talk to the average, um, let's say high school, college student, adult that's older than me, um, it's still a foreign concept. So it's kind of weird seeing like, oh, this book sold millions and millions and millions. And then, you know, in the people, you know, because you consume so much of the media and the internet, uh, as as a young person, you just thought like, you know, because so many people bought the book that, you know, your next door neighbor would still uh, would be familiar with the concepts. But a lot of people that I know are kind of had the poor dad mentality, right? The poor dad mentality. So we'll just kind of give a quick review of what the difference between rich dad, I call him Mr. Miyagi, even though that's, that's kind of just me being stupid. Uh, but in, in the sense that he's not your dad, but he's kind of like your dad, right? Because he's teaching you so much. Uh, rich dad versus his real dad, a poor dad who was like the superintendent. I want to say Super Nintendo, but Super and and shout outs to you if you know that reference from The Simpsons. Super Nintendo, superintendent of Hawaii. So he made good money 
and he was broke, right? So basically the difference between rich dad is that you take the path less taken, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you're a risk taker, um, you buy real estate, uh, you're using money and not working for money. So the different biggest difference between rich people and poor people is that poor people work hard only for money, right? Whereas rich people use money to 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 make it work for them. So they build systems, they they hired people, um, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the things that I really uh, resonate with this book, with the rich dad concept, is just kind of uh, the stance toward the anti school system. Um, rhetoric right i myself am pretty much anti-school because i spent a lot of, and this is me like i spent a lot of time in school and i feel like i didn't get anything out of it and i felt like i was out of this world because i felt i felt like i was the only one who felt that my time was wasted by being in like school and college everyone else seemed to like really like have this like happy happy cult attitude that you're insane if you don't like being here Yet the statistics show that most people are broke and a lot of people have a lot of debt from college that they never really pay off, right? I, I've known people who made six figures and uh, even in their 50s, they, they still have like student loan debts. And, it's like, and they say things like weird things like, oh, I'll keep it because it's a, it, it helps my credit or it's a tax deduction or something like that, right? So it's like these weird um, – ideologies that permeate through it throughout society that make no sense from top to bottom and i i love the anti-school system uh rhetoric where it's basically like you know school teaches you just to be a follower where whereas if you want to be rich you want to essentially have to be some sort of a business owner investor you essentially have to be a leader um another thing that i think was really revolutionary at that time that i guess i must have read a million times so it seemed normal for me is that um Rich people own assets that pay them, and poor people have liabilities that they think are assets. So the, the biggest one that I think um, that he gives as an example of a liability that really – I'm sorry, an asset that's not really an asset but more of a liability is your own personal home. So a lot of people out there, your average person, quote, poor dad, takes a lot of uh, a pride in home ownership. You know, it's still relevant today. That's why so many people – overpaid for their homes in the last couple of years because they saw it as like oh my gosh you know FOMO if I don't get that home um, I need it and it's gonna you know I'm gonna do things like pay over asking price uh, remove contingencies I don't need inspection I need that home right <laughs> so but what they found and the reason why 90% of people who bought in the past well even this year uh, regretted it is just because it's it's a drain it's a liability and not an asset. So the thing that Robert emphasizes is that, hey, if you have an asset, it puts money in your pocket, whereas a liability takes money in your pocket. So let's say a rental home, you know, if after all expenses are paid and the cash flows, then that's an asset, right? And so you want many, many, many assets to pay you. Whereas with the liability, like a personal home, um, you know, after all expenses are paid, did, did you get any cash from that? No. And that's kind of like, the mentality of the poor person that you don't, you know, you have, you're proud of ownership and you think it's going to build equity, but even then it, it doesn't, you know, they don't really mention this book, but just from my own experiences, if you pay off a mortgage, even if your equity doubles or your home value doubles and you have a 6% mortgage, you're, you're probably have lost money somewhere in the equation, but that's kind of how poor people think where they're not thinking they're, um, thinking through the situation and don't understand why they're living paycheck to paycheck. Um, some things that I really resonate with is that they, I'm, I'm not a person who likes to work hard. Right. And rich people, you know, rich people, they use systems, they're systems oriented. So what they do is they use their money to create systems. And one of the, and if you kind of take a look at the book and we'll kind of go into more detail about this in a, another video, Robert talks about like, oh, there's four quadrants and you're an employee, self-employed, investor, and business owner. And you definitely want to stay away from the employee and self-employed, right? You definitely want to stay away from that. What you want to do is like either be an investor or business owner and build systems so that the system does the work for you, right? So th that's, that's a really great idea. Now, 
what really makes me sad is that we still in a world with tons of poor dads. You know, if I walk outside, just talk to the average person, talk to people I know, um, poor dads everywhere, right? And even though this book has been out for, for about 30 years, um, I feel like the, the average person um, just does not want to kind of escape the matrix and go into like entrepreneurship, business ownership. You know, even things like making YouTube videos every single day, that that's kind of a spirit of an entrepreneur because you're taking away time from your day to go ahead and try to sell something to the, the marketplace. Um, so that's, that's, and, and here's the thing. I think for me, I never really read this book until like a few years ago, but I became so familiar with it because everybody else was making like YouTube videos about it and media about it. So I became familiar with the book and the ideas about it just because like everybody was so like um, inspired by it. So like I'm inspired by other people's inspiration, even though I, like I actually like his first book better, uh, which is about um, the uh, like which is a critique of the school system. It's called If You Want to Be Happy and, um, and Rich, Don't Go to School. And I feel like for me, that resonates with me more just because I feel like 90 percent of the problems in the society that you see just come from a very poor school system, right? So what happens is that the school system produces dysfunctional adults, hence a dysfunctional society. And it's a system that, that you know, um, repeats uh, that process over and over again. And so the dysfunctional uh, dysfunction just passes from generation to generation, which is unfortunate. But I think this is a good book too. I think it's worth... Um, reading at least one time or maybe you don't have to read just use chat gpt to get the summary um but yeah so definitely something to read and ponder about um don't be a poor dad be a rich dad and and you know uh i really wish that the young people of today uh would be inspired by these types of ideas and fortunately um if for some reason whatever reason i don't know if it's because of technology or something and the cell phones but a lot of people I I feel like are kind of like the poor dad, especially the younger people. I don't know. Is it just me? What about you? I mean, if you're if you're a little bit older and you talk with the younger people, do you feel like that that they kind of resonate with poor dad ideas? Like, I mean, hard work, lots of education, security, uh, you know, stable job, being obsessed with liabilities, like owning a home, uh, hard work oriented. Like that that's just not. You know, every time I meet a young person that t- that kind of emotes those types of values, I get very sad, but it just seems to be the norm, at least for me nowadays. All right. Well, this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship Quick Book Review. We might do another continuation of these types of reviews, uh, even for this book. Um, if you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the link below to the Google form, or you can email us to find out more information by going to the About page of the YouTube channel and then emailing us there. Have a great day, everybody, and we will speak soon.